Hey, I'm Brother Mark Marion. I'm Brother PT. Hi, I'm Brother Francesco. Hello, I'm Brother Angelus. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. We are all transitional deacons, which means we are ordained deacons because we're pursuing the priesthood. Mm. Mm. And it's been a long journey. For me, it's been about 15 years. It's about 12 years for me. Yeah, about 15 for me. Too. About 12 for me. Kind of cool. So some move quicker than others. So yeah. it's a <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> For each of us, it's just the ordination day is set. It's just a couple of weeks away. Crazy. What I thought would be an interesting idea is to have sort of like a behind the scenes into the making of a priest. For a lot of people, I think it might be interesting, and hopefully, it's it's edifying to see why it is that four guys and. 2018 are are pursuing the priesthood and not not something else talking with the guys we've all been living together eating together going to school together praying together it's been tough i'm getting i'm getting this having fun together <laughs> loving each other. don't touch me uh, so two things which really sort of rise to the top of of aspects of the priesthood which i think both are all of us are very attracted to are the celebration of mass and the eucharist and the hearing of confessions and the giving of, of the Lord's mercy and absolution in the sacraments. Just experiencing the Lord's mercy throughout my life has been just a tremendous, tremendous thing. And especially just with, with different priests in my life walking with me and just, um, especially in hearing confessions, it's just been a, a great sense of joy and it's a great sense of, yeah, tangibly experiencing the Lord's mm -hmm. mercy. And mm -hmm. I think there's nothing more that excites me than to, to walk with somebody, to speak with them, to kind of dive into the mess of their lives, just like the Lord has done in every single one of our lives um, in confession. Um, and just to pronounce those words, you know, um, mm -hmm. and through, I absolve you from your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, and just to really be with the person in that moment, that, that excites me tremendous, tremendous, a tremendous amount. And uh, yeah, I couldn't think of anything more that I want to do with my time, with my life, uh, for the rest of however long I'm given on this earth, than just to do that with, with God's faithful. So I was thinking when we were thinking about the Mass and, and, and confession, um, my life before I was a friar was uh, in college, and, and I really wanted to be involved in politics. And part of that desire for me was to try to find answers and solutions to what's going on and the challenges in the world. And um, I just remember at some point it being really a strong desire, but realizing that in that way of life, just finding the answer and finding the solution for all of people's problems and all the world's problems uh, was pretty impossible. And so in my conversion back to the church and my initial call to the priesthood in religious life, I really just felt like Jesus was the answer, and in particular, Jesus in experiencing the sacraments was the answer. And so when we go to Mass and to think about being a priest and to be able to give to the people um, Jesus and his presence in the Eucharist and Jesus really becoming the answer to all the human questions, to all the human problems, all the challenges in the world that we can offer as priests um, on behalf of the people back to the Father, this, this desire and this longing to make things right again and to find a solution in the world. Um, that's what my heart longs for. Um, I looked for other places, but to be a priest and to make that offering and to give people the answer in Jesus and the Eucharist um, is something I'm really looking forward to. Hmm. When we were in the Holy Land, a um, couple of years ago, and we went down to Tiberias, which is the beach where Jesus appeared, um, one of his appearances after the resurrection. And I remember walk the, the beach is kind of stony, and I remember walking along the beach and hearing the, um, the stones move under my feet, and, uh, and the sun was setting, and seeing the sun and, and, and the water that Jesus walked on. And I remember thinking, uh, imagine, imagine being here with him back then. In a way, I've asked the question, what do you do if you weren't with him back then? So, um, so for us who are like 2,000 years after the event, after the incarnation, how, how can we encounter Jesus and be transformed by him? And the answer is the priesthood in a, in a real way. And it's amazing because when the, as priests, when we're going to say, like you said, I absolve you from your sins, mm -hmm. the people are going to hear Jesus because we say those words in the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when we say, this is my body, the people are going to hear Jesus and Jesus is going to be made present um, because we are 
acting in the person of Jesus. In a real way, we're not at a disadvantage because we live 2,000 years after, after the incarnation. Um, and that's just amazing to be, to be called to be um, the continuation of his presence in that way, in that real, real way. We know that the greatest thing the priest does right, is, mm -hmm. is the celebration of Mass. Right. And there is something for me very, people love Jesus. They need him and they want him in their lives. Mm -hmm. And to be called to the priesthood, which is how the Lord wants to continue to give his, his Eucharistic presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity, um, to be called to share in that and to respond to that, it's a, it's a, it is a beautiful gift. There are sacrifices involved along the way, but compared to that opportunity, um, they're no big deal. So we've all been on this journey for over a decade. And you know, for myself, for about the 15 years pursuing it, there's been a lot of other good options in life. But the desire for me, which sort of burned through all those other desires, um, is the, the confessional. Mm -hmm. I do have this sort of like deep desire to, to bring God's healing to people's lives. And, and like what greater healing is there than the forgiveness of sins which the Lord wants to pour out on people in mm -hmm. the confessional. Mm -hmm. And to help people encounter that mercy and, and sort of be restored to grace, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. beautiful thing, and, and it's it's hard. It's a little bit hard to talk about it because our normal <laughs> adjectives just don't really. They're not sufficient. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking too, like how. How as, as priests, we're never going to stop being disciples. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's this this invitation to. Um, to be, his hands and feet and his his mouth and and to continue to be his presence. But we're always going to be need, needing to seek His presence, mm -hmm. and and so we always remain disciples. And so, um, just that that dynamic um, is really a unique one um, as a priest. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that we're always always following, and yet we're also sent. You know. So, my brothers and sisters, we thank you for watching. And although the finish the the ordination date is on the near horizon, we still ask and beg. Your prayers, please. That we, we may need it. prepare we need it. well these last few weeks, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Goodbye. God bless y'all. See you guys. Thank you.